<laughs> CBS Films. Daniel Radcliffe's attempt to shake Harry Potter is ruined by the movie's second logo, which reminds us of the train to Hogwarts and the important information he's likely sharing with Hermione and Ron on it. Fictional tea. Also, Tea Party is symbolic of American Tea Party, serving empty cups to brainless human lookalikes. Come on, how much force can a seven-year-old girl's slow-motion footstep have? It's not like they're stomping, they're just f***ing walking. Woman in black looks out and gets three windows to pull off this symmetrical horror suicide. Uh, the girl in the middle got a head start. Foggy glimpses of a wedding and a pregnancy during the opening credits makes me wish they could have applied thicker fog so I didn't have to see that. Jeez, his wife is dead, he's got overdue bills, and his kid's still alive. How much misfortune does this guy have, anyway? Also, quick flask shot and a glance at an overdue bill give you 80% of this character's backstory in one five-second shot. Child draws sad or disturbing family pictures in a horror movie cliche. You look just like your mother. Who is dead. We're a law firm, not a charity. Wait, what? Didn't the stack of overdue bills basically say you weren't paying him any money anyway? This is your final warning. As if the money we weren't giving you is not enough warning. Movie cuts from Harry Potter to a train shot and expects me not to have a giggle fit. Will you just go ahead and tell us his wife died during childbirth already? I wish I still had that cliche. It's a boy. We're very sorry, Mr. Kipps. I agree that he should have gotten the news about the baby first, but damn, they waited an awful long time to spring the bad news on him, didn't they? Also, Kipps has been in a funk for four years, basically blowing off work to be sad for that amount of time. Why isn't he already fired? And I can give you a lift. It's on my way home. Thank you. Rides from strangers. The hotel dude doesn't want to give Kips his room, which makes you wonder, why'd the hotel take the reservation in the first place? What did they learn about a name and a reservation in the last few days? How would they learn anything about it faster than a train travels? How did they learn his name was even somehow connected to an investigation at the creepy house? Or does this asshole just generally distrust any outsider? And I'm back to asking why'd they even take the reservation in the first place? Also, even if it's true, didn't Sam Daly tell Arthur that he didn't see many visitors around this place? And I don't get to see many new faces here. It's hard to believe that this inn would ever be so packed if that were the case. It's this way. No payment of any kind will be required. In. Either everyone in this f***ing town somehow knows Kipps and the reason he's here, or everyone in this town is a dick to everyone. My husband went to meet you at the Gifford Arms. And here he is, like magic. Also, obviously, since you're psychic, we figured you'd know he went to meet you at the inn. So we took no measures whatsoever to make sure you didn't walk all the way over here. Also, in such a small town, and with everyone knowing who Arthur is by sight, it's hard to believe that her husband didn't see him on the way over to the inn. I don't expect to be finished until um, Friday, at least. But you are finished talking, despite your lips still obviously moving after you said that. Bobby Keckwick is waiting outside with your luggage. So you went into his attic room, packed his belongings in his bag, and took them? Wow, this house that everyone in town is really spooked and concerned about isn't remotely close to town. Any town. Oh, look, there's the place where Harry and Dumbledore found the first horror crux. Jesus, this movie is blatantly trading on Harry Potter imagery for subconscious audience goodwill. Half of this movie is Daniel Radcliffe walking into some empty house or room and looking around at things. Also, this woman has been dead for one month, and there are a terrifying number of cobwebs everywhere in this house. You know, I was perfectly fine standing here looking in a completely different direction, but now for nobody's benefit except anyone who might be watching, I'll turn to my left because it's good to get exercise. The dirty water coming out of this faucet is fresher than this jump scare. This is exactly like the pile of letters my college girlfriend wrote me, only less on fire. Tide that covers the only road to the creepy house ends up not being a real factor at all in the plot of this film. Pfft, one-year-olds can't read. 19th century seven-year-old did not have an occupation yet. What a lazy bastard. Even in 19 whatever year it is, how can an official cause of death be drowning when no body was recovered? Noises upstairs in the creepy house? No wonder this movie got a sequel. He's even holding a small wand. Salmonella. <laughs> Jump Scarecrow. Ah, long distance nuns. He thinks he saw a disappearing ghost woman, so naturally he storms right outside to confront said mystical being. Right before he went outside, he looked out the window and there were a couple of patches of fog. But now, totally immersive fog, because we don't know how to horror otherwise. What the f is wrong with this asshole? Did he not want to call out to Arthur to tell him he was here? A guy like this who is scared of this place would definitely not get out of his carriage just so he could be a jump scared dick. No one has used nine lives causeway for years, sir. How is that possible? How did anyone know that Alice Drablo was even dead? How did Arthur's law firm know for a fact that there were documents they needed to get out of the house? Alice didn't like visitors, she obviously didn't go to town often or at all, and she had no relatives. There had to be someone using the causeway to know all this, right? This poster offers a reward for something about gardens and vegetables. I'm taking it that the important information is buried in the small print. Okay. Hmm, do I send the jump scare via blood puking or the blood puking? Girl who drank lie just happens to be escorted into the police station while Arthur is there. Grief mimicking. Please don't go back to Eel Marsh House. Why? To Kipps. You said you have a son. Okay, look, you can't tell someone not to go to a house all spooky-like and then not answer the damn question when they naturally ask why the house should be avoided. Also, doesn't Arthur have all the documents he needs? Does he even need to stay here? Can't he go back to London and conduct all the business he needs to conduct? It's f***ing paperwork. I heard about the girl in the village. My wife doesn't know, and I'd be grateful 
if you could avoid the subject. Indeed, the subject of children altogether. So now let's have dinner in the room where there's reminders of our dead son everywhere. And we'll assume that my wife will not be the least bit curious about you and won't bring up the subject herself. Also, this dude just asked Kips not to talk about kids, and yet his house is nothing but pictures and paintings of his dead son, who he himself is now talking about. Elizabeth, no. She's done this before? And you didn't have her committed to Shutter Island? Ah, whatever year this is, when chloroform was considered medicine. What a time to be alive. Then they chloroform the dogs, too, because why not? Yeah, I thought some company would do her good. Considering the narrow amount of topics you could talk about without her going crazy and knifing the table, this was a silly thing to think. Just in case you didn't get the idea that Mrs. Daly treats her dogs like human children, here she is after a chloroforming, tucking the dogs into a crib with the door wide open so that any asshole can walk by and see it. I'll lose my job if I don't get this paperwork done. It's something I could do on the train back to London, but f*** it. I need to stay here to do it and unearth all the horror I can find. Well, this movie's been pretty consistent so far with the jump scares. This is a jump scare waiting to happen, right? How does this scene happen? All of these people live inside the town, but they're all outside the town waiting for Arthur and Mr. Daly to drive back out, instead of just waiting for them by the car when they were in Jerome's house. Also, how did they all gather so quickly? Arthur and Sam drove to the house, the girl screamed at them, and in two minutes they're driving out and there's a mob waiting for them all of a sudden. Also, one of these guys is Jerome himself. Did he not have one bit of concern about Arthur showing up to the house while his daughter was there all alone? You should have left. You should have gone when we told you to. You should have given him even 5% of a decent reason instead of just telling him to go, and he might have actually left. Wait, he didn't bring any of that paperwork back with him when he was here the first time? I would want light too, but Kips lights enough candles to nearly guarantee a house fire. Don't worry about me, just slapping my hand on the window. Want me to cook you some eggs? I make great eggs. It's almost like this thing only exists so that they could get a cool shot and a jump scare out of it. Let the sight of me be a contract for our now implied relationship. I'll just f*** with you for a while, but I'll kill you later than sooner for unknown reasons. Savvy? He's still gonna go in that house after this shit, isn't he? See? Told you. Human curiosity is not this strong. Haven't you ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? It's self-actualization, esteem, love, safety, and then physiological needs. And then somewhere way after that shit comes curiosity. Jesus. Great, you are now exactly where the ghost apparition wanted you to be. And for some reason you're looking for the ghost thing to be where you were standing earlier. What the f*** are you looking at? I don't see anything. Oh well, kill you later. Also, this movie's ghosts need to make up their mind as to whether or not Harry Potter can see them. For no good reason at all, Kips decides to open the window seat. And what do you know, he finds plot-related sh** in there. And great, more paperwork! I think we've seen what the true horror is in this movie. Dear Alice, I find it hard to express the depth of betrayal from you, my own sister. That your refusal to let me visit my son, or even give him my birthday cards. Okay, but the paper he looked at a second ago says this letter was written late 1800s. A time during which I think it would be difficult to know whether or not someone else has given the mail you sent to another someone else. How can he even read this? I will never forgive you. Rot in hell. What about the sentence just before rot in hell? That ends in the word die? See it there to the left? How come the voiceover letter writing narrator Death Chick didn't say that sentence? I think this door needs to be open. Don't you think this door needs to be open? Kip starts to fall asleep literally two seconds after leaning back. This dog growls but doesn't do anything more until the woman in black gets within killing distance. Um, the ghost definitely didn't have time to scratch out these eyes before the dog barked. Get the f out of this house! <sighs> this doll does not approve of Arthur's redecorating skills. Neither does Rafiki from The Lion King, nor even this monocled monkey. Jeez, what's her problem? Also, I want to give the movie points just for finally letting Kip see some ghost shit, but it's a jump scare, so I still have to call it a sin. Well, the knocking on the door is surely the recently risen from the dead kid, so why are you walking toward the door? Who's there? Ghosts who are obviously trying to scare this asshole stop doing the scary shit when he yells who's there. Why would you do this? The kids from Sinister are not amused. Oh, now he's gonna run away from the scary shit after spending the entire movie going towards it. I went upstairs, got scared. Went outside, got scared. Came back inside, time to go back upstairs. Those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. All Muddy Kid wanted was to play with his toys in the room where that woman hanged herself. And then this asshole shows up instead of doing his paperwork. Bedwetting. Why does this tar baby have to be born through the sheets of the bed instead of, I don't know, just making an appearance? Does it know it needs to be theatrical because it's in a movie? This asshole is conveniently waiting to pick Kips up as he's fleeing the house in terror. Obvious green screen driving scene is obvious. Of course, maybe that's just what the ghosts wanted us to see. Stay there! I'm gonna come and get you! Let's talk about the woman in black's plan. She basically sits around rocking in her chair at the Eel Marsh house and enjoys an angry yet peaceful ghostly existence. But if someone sees her, she's like, how dare you? I'm going to the nearest town to make children there kill themselves. Nearly one entire minute of grieving over a kid we thought was kind of a dick anyway. Whenever she's been seen, however briefly and whoever by, 
There has always been one sure and certain result. Okay, but who in this town has seen her? Did they get alienated by the town, too? What is the history of woman in black sightings? Also, why did none of the townspeople tell him why he shouldn't go to the house? Lives are on the line, but they're all scared of telling him like the woman in black is f***ing Voldemort or something. They took her boy away, so now she takes us. But only if someone goes to her house and sees her. There is that caveat. She made both these kids kill themselves, and then these three kids. But these two kids she left alone when the girl drank the lie. She really is kind of a picky ghost, isn't she? If we can reunite Janet Humphrey with her son, perhaps she'll finally be at peace. Or she won't. Sam, I feel it! It's just beneath my feet! Arthur decides to do something insane that might cause his death and probably won't even work if he succeeds. I found the boy! And he's remarkably undecomposed. And the woman in black left them both alone while Kipps washed every bit of mud off himself and the other dude did shots. Does Arthur know what the hell he's doing? Does law school teach you about the rituals to reunite a dead son with his dead mother? I guess this movie skipped the go to the library scene that so many of these horror movies do, which is totally fine. I just want to know how he thinks that winding up these toys is a necessary step in the ghost reunion. Man, this guy drinks a ton, and he's the only guy who owns a car in this area. So if he ever needs a designated driver, he's f***ed. Damn, that sprinkler system's gone haywire again. That's all the thanks I get for digging your kid out of the mud? What a whore. I think she's gone. She's been gone several times, and she always comes back. Why is this any different? If you were going to do this anyway, I don't know why you went through all the trouble with the kid and his birthday cards and the wind-up toys. That literally could have been a total waste of time, and as far as I know, you have no way of confirming that it wasn't. I still don't know why, even if she never forgave her sister for her son dying, why that means everyone else had to suffer too. And that weird don't look at me rule. That will never get explained until maybe the sequel bails them out. We're going straight back to London. Can you fetch us some tickets? Probably not, since it's like the middle of the night, right? They made a big deal out of him missing the last train to London earlier in the movie. It's getting late. You'll miss your London train. But now it's like, I don't know, a lot of clock? Bull f***ing shit movie. After the muddy dead boy body burying hell he just went through to protect his son, there is no f***ing way this father is nonchalantly letting go of his son's hand. Hell, both of these men should be paying extra attention to this child's whereabouts after the evening they had. Who's that lady? That's your mummy. Oh, so it's a happy ending. Woohoo! I mean, I guess it beats paperwork. Yay, we're all dead! As long as we have each other, I guess we should be thanking the woman in black for putting Arthur's kid directly in front of that train. Man, I hope they don't do that thing where the horror villain suddenly turns to the camera. God damn it. Also, Ghost breaks the fourth wall and f***s the illusion up for everyone. Thanks, Ghost Bitch. That's Nanny. That's Mummy. Look, Mummy. There's no plane up in the sky. Strength through unity. Unity through faith. I'm a God-fearing Englishman and I'm goddamn proud of it. So what was Draco doing with that weird-looking cabinet? And who were all those people? So you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold <laughs> the reservation. To you. One minute you're defending the whole galaxy, and suddenly you find yourself sucking down Darjeeling with Marie Antoinette and her little sister. <laughs> Richard Whippin? Holy smokes, is that you? Ha! As I live and breathe. These letters have just now been delivered to Mr. Kringle by bona fide employees of the post office. Not in